Hello everyone, I'm Peter Donovan. In this first video, I'll explain why the narrow way we've been thinking about environmental issues such as climate guarantees failure. In the next video, I'll explore how a broader view, one that includes the carbon cycle, soils, and the work of the biosphere, gives enormous opportunities as well as responsibilities. In the videos that will follow these, I'll provide specific examples of people who are slowing down the carbon cycle and explain how you can engage with these opportunities too. The rising carbon dioxide in the atmosphere shows a big change, perhaps the first to be recorded that involves the entire Earth system as well as most human activities. Lots of scientists and other people began to see the situation like this. Carbon dioxide traps heat. That's an atmospheric pollution problem. It's caused mainly by burning fossil fuels, and the solution is self-evident. Reduce fossil fuel emissions. This is popular logic based on good evidence, but let's step back from the statements themselves and see what happens when we frame the situation this way. Schumacher observed that there are two kinds of problems which behave differently. With some problems, there might be many different possible solutions, but by a process of elimination, which is often done by experts, we come up with a single best solution. Lots of mechanical or technical problems are like this. If the car won't start, a mechanic can find the cause of the problem by eliminating a number of possible causes until he finds the actual cause. This kind of problem solving is essential to our success and we've become very good at training people for it. But it doesn't work well in situations that Schumacher characterized as divergent. In these, dedicated and intelligent people come up with different or even opposite solutions, like a branching tree. This kind of divergence is common in living systems. These aren't problems that can be solved once and for all, and they, they often point to a need for a larger purpose or goal, such as resilience of a system, rather than the survival of individual parts. So what kind of problem are we dealing with, with this rising carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and climate change? Is it a technical problem where we expect to arrive at one best solution by process of elimination? As the climate issue gained attention and urgency, people took positions, and the positions multiplied and divided. Some people refused to acknowledge any risks and opposed any change, but people also perceived the situation and its risks differently. The process of elimination hasn't gone smoothly. In order to be right, others had to be wrong as well as stupid, ignorant, or corrupt. People went to great lengths to discredit their opponents. Implementing any solution became politically risky. It was better to keep on spinning. If a country or region unilaterally reduces its emissions, it may not reduce its risks because greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are pretty well mixed over the globe. The costs of change and the benefits aren't always well connected. Last but not least is the question of leverage. Suppose we had stopped fossil fuel use completely 100% in 2007. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, it would take nearly a century for atmospheric carbon dioxide to get down to 350 parts per million, which many consider to be a safe level. In the meantime, we lose some cooling aerosol effects, and we have all this area under the curve in which the oceans continue to heat. Reducing fossil fuel use may be critical, but it may not give us much near-term leverage on the problem. Yet many continue to suppose that reducing fossil fuel use is the same as a climate fix. 
We want to save the planet and rescue the atmosphere, but we're stuck. The bailout is not happening. Logic or data doesn't seem to help much. Fear, conflict, and defensiveness keep our frame small, a kind of tunnel vision. Atmospheric carbon dioxide continues to climb. We don't appear to be converging on the solution. So even with all the scientific work on the problem, with all the energy and dedication of countless committed and visionary people, we feel powerless. When you are powerless, it's an easy and natural thing to excuse yourself from the issue, to avoid it, and even to deny its importance or urgency.